Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the opening ceremony of the Worldwide AI Hackathon, co-hosted by WOW AI and the Transatlantic AI Exchange on behalf of the future WOW DAO, the first decentralized autonomous organization for the AI community. My name is Thomas, and it's an honor to serve as the moderator for this incredible event. First, I want to share a big thanks to our colleague, Eric, who actually put a lot of time and effort in preparing the content as the initial moderator, but due to some technical challenges, he was unable to proceed. So Eric, thank you very much. Our mission is to empower AI talents by challenging them to solve the toughest problems and motivate them to turn their ideas into complete products and commercialize them. The challenges are designed by top AI thought leaders who are AI executives from more than 30 tech giants and large corporations, including Google, Oracle, Microsoft, IBM, MasterCard, Samsung, Oxford Brooks, and many others. Today, we have gathered the brightest minds and the most innovative thinkers from all over the world to collaborate and create the most groundbreaking projects using artificial intelligence. We would like to take a moment to recognize our amazing judges, the mentors, the contestants who have made this event possible. Their support and dedication to advancing AI technology have allowed us to bring together some of the most talented individuals in the field, and we are grateful for their contributions. We are pleased to introduce our esteemed hosts for today's event, who are representatives of the hackathon organizers. First, it's Ha, the co-organizer of the Worldwide AI Hackathon and the CEO of Laudao, and myself, Thomas Neubert, I am also the co-organizer as well as the founder of the Transatlantic AI Exchange. And formerly, until recently, I was the general manager and senior director of the Data Center and AI Acceleration Incubation Program at Intel here in Silicon Valley, California. We also honored to welcome our distinguished speakers. Each of them will take a moment to introduce themselves and share and address some of the topics that we would like to talk about. We have uh, Rayu Marora, he is the AI and NL product manager at Apple. We have Vijay Velusami, the executive engineering director of JP Morgan Chase. We have Pablo Eduardo Geoffrey Ortega, data lead in AI and data exploitation at Walmart. And last but not least, we have Andrea Garcia Munjaras, the leader data science, digital and innovation at Heineken. And most importantly, we would like to extend a warm welcome to all the judges, mentors, and contestants and future potential members of the Valdao who have joined us today. Thanks for joining us. Without all of you, this event would not be possible. Now, let's take a look at the agenda for today's event. To start, we will hear from our esteemed judges who will share with you about each competition, uh, welcome you to join and participate and provide insights on what they expect from you. Next, we will introduce the WOW DAO, the first decentralized autonomous organization for the AI community. That's really our, our vision to do that. Our hosts representing some initial members of the DAO will explain the bigger picture of the worldwide AI hackathon. They will discuss why we are implementing this event, the ecosystem, and the benefits of being a DAO member for pretty much everybody who is on this call and everybody who will participate in the hackathon. After that, we will begin by welcoming all participants and introducing the competitions. We will provide a brief overview of each one and explain the judging criteria. You will have the opportunity to hear valuable thoughts and tips sharing from judges, mentors, and the organizers. These individuals come from diverse backgrounds and industries, ensuring that you receive valuable advice and tips on how to win the hackathon. Finally, we will have an AMA session where, where participants can ask questions to our judges, mentors, and the organizers. 
We wish all of the participants the best of luck and looking forward to seeing the innovation solutions that you will come up with during this hackathon. Thank you all for joining us today and let's make this hackathon a great success. Now, without further ado, we would like to invite our judges to join us in this live session to share the insights about the hackathon's competitions. Let us welcome our three judges, representing all judges of this hackathon to share about the three competitions. First, for the generative AI applications competition, we have with us uh, Vayum Aurora. Vayum has worked as both a machine learning engineer and product manager in the search and recommendations since graduation uh, with a comp side degree at Carnegie Mellon University. He is currently a product manager at Apple, working on improving natural language understanding for products like Siri and Safari, which we are all very much aware of, and is excited to contribute to how AI can be used to drive innovation and improve our everyday lives. Let's give him a warm welcome to our guests who will now join us on stage. Varian, the stage is yours. Thank you, Thomas, for that great introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Vayam Aurora. As mentioned, I am a product manager working on the Siri understanding system at Apple, and I am really excited to welcome everyone to our WOW AI Hackathon. Today, I will be covering some of the information on the generative AI component of the hackathon. As we know, generative AI is a form of technology that can produce various types of content, such as text, images, audio, and other media. The aspect of generative models that make it so special is that it can take what it has learned from the examples it has been shown and create something entirely new based on that information. It's the machine learning technology that's designed to think like a human. One can generate new ideas, designs, and solutions from existing data sets. With the release of ChatGPT to, to the general public in November 2022, a tremor was felt around the world as the power of AI was democratized to the masses. Now, countless startups and software applications have begun touting their own generative AI capabilities and integrations. Next slide, please. And so that leads us to ask the question, what are some of the reasons to develop solutions with generative AI? The first is automation. Generative AI is being used heavily in automation, especially for automating repetitive tasks and handling large amounts of data more efficiently than humans. Generative AI can help organizations make more informed decisions by automatically evaluating sales data and market research reports. This automation can also be extended to customer service fronts. Generative AI can be used to automate processes such as responding to customer emails or fielding customer inquiries. This can drastically reduce labor costs while still providing a seamless and satisfying customer experience. Which leads me to the next point. Generative AI can help businesses drastically reduce time and cost reduction. An area of this that is particularly interesting is the construction industry. We can use models that generate detailed construction plans, which can help builders save time and money. The AI algorithms that can analyze the design data and create detailed plans for each stage of construction, including materials, labor, and equipment needed. This can improve construction coordination and reduce the risk of error delays. And finally, one of the most interesting use cases for this technology is that it is quickly becoming a best practice for startups across many industries is the ability to reason over vast amounts of unstructured data and generate insights. Reasoning over the data is an ability to extract insights, patterns, and knowledge from large and complex data sets using natural language or code. This can help startups solve problems, make decisions, and create value from data, which could include generating summaries, sentiment analysis, and also personalized recommendations based on the feedback. Next slide, please. Moving on to a few use cases that judges would like to see. 
I think there's a few different aspects of a great project. One is the design and implementation factor. Does it work? Is it implementable? Is it implementable? Is there a technical complexity to it? Is the project technically impressive, complex, and how sophisticated and elegant is the solution? At this point, we know a lot about the capabilities of generative AI. There's text generation, such as news articles, stories. There's image generation, such as photographs and artwork. There's generating music, such as songs and compositions. And there's generating videos, such as short films and music videos. But for this hackathon, we hope that all contestants can start to think at a broader scale. Generative AI has the potential to revolutionize several different industries. And so with that, we hope to see an aspect of social impact and commercial viability. How impactful is your idea? Can it impact the lives of many people in a significant way? Is the idea feasible? And does it have economic or societal value? To give a few examples of what I'm talking about, most of us have maybe waited long in line at the airport waiting for security. It might be possible to use generative AI that can help with face identification or verification systems at airports. By creating a full face picture of a, of a passenger from photos taken from different angles, the technology can make it easier to identify and verify the identity of travels. Secondly, in the healthcare industry, generative AI can convert x-rays and CT scans into more realistic images, which can be helpful for diagnosis. Doctors may be able to get a clear, more detailed view of the inside of a patient's body, and this can be useful for catching dangerous diseases like cancer in their early stages. The potential of generative AI is huge because this technology can learn to mimic any distribution of data. So in addition to a good design and implementation, impact at a broader scale is something the judges are really excited to see. Next, I'll hand it over to our next judge. Thank you, Byron, for the very enlightening and informative talk. It was uh, truly inspiring, and thanks for sharing some of these uh, use cases. Really appreciate that. So representing the synthetic data applications competition, we have with us uh, Vijay Valusami, the executive engineering director at uh, JP Morgan Chase. Vijay is an experienced technology leader with over 15 years of expertise in solving complex challenges using various technologies such as open source, big data, analytics, machine learning, and cloud platforms. He is also an Emmy Award winner for his contributions in this field. So the stage is yours. Please come and uh, join us. Thank you, Thomas. Um, uh, thank you for the opportunity as well. This is very exciting to be a um, to uh, judge and see all the exciting work that you guys are about to be um, beginning. Um, so I'll be here uh, talking about synthetic data applications. Uh, next slide, please. Synthetic data applications involves generating data that is similar to real world data. This data can then be used to train AI models, which can then be used to perform a variety of tasks. It is essential due to privacy concerns and limitations of public sources. Um, also, there may be restrictions on use or a lack of information about how the data was obtained. Um, we encourage contestants to come up with innovations to apply synthetic data in different sectors where getting real data sets is difficult. Next slide, please. There are a number of reasons to use synthetic AI. Um, the first one being accuracy. Synthetic data can be used to uh, generate data that is similar to real world data with high levels of accuracy, even when real world data is scarce. This can be useful for training AI models in areas where data is difficult to obtain, um, such as in medical research. Uh, and it can be used to generate data that is free of uh, bias especially for training AI models that need to be fair, unbiased, reliable, and effective. The second most important uh, reason to develop effective solutions with synthetic data is data privacy. Um, the synthetic data can be used to protect the privacy of individuals by creating realistic, but not real data, uh, which can then be used instead of uh, actual personal data. 
Uh, the last but not least, uh, scalability. Synthetic data can be generated at scale. So uh, providing a large volume of data for machine learning models without encouraging, uh, in, uh, without incurring the costs and effort to collecting and labeling real world data. Uh, next slide, please. So there are uh, uh, lots of exciting use cases that we are looking to see, um, especially around uh, privacy protection, uh, use of synthetic data to safeguard the privacy of individuals by generating realistic but not real data that can be used instead of actual personal data, um, autonomous vehicles, um, applications of synthetic data to train and validate self-driving cars as models and algorithms in simulated environments, um, healthcare, use of synthetic data to generate diverse medical data sets for research, drug discovery and personalized medicine, um, agriculture, uh, innovative applications of synthetic data to optimize crop production, pest management, or even soil analysis. Um, the one more close to my heart is financial services, uh, use of synthetic data for fraud detection and risk analysis in financial transactions. Um, or even virtual worlds uh, where you can use them for gaming, uh, entertainment, uh, other things. So uh, good luck to you all. And I'm excited to see all the wonderful work that, uh, that you will all be working on. Thank you, Thomas. Excellent, BJ. Thank you very much. Uh, very exciting and uh, also very glad to have you as part of our team uh, and contributing to this to this hackathon, particularly with the interesting company that you are presenting in this field. Uh, and for the self-supervised learning in the autonomous industry competition, we are truly honored to have Pablo Eduardo, Jeffrey Ortega, the data lead AI and data exploitation at a very small company called Walmart. I'm just kidding. Uh, with his wealth of experience in data analytics, exploitation, and strategy development, Pablo has played a crucial role in shaping Walmart's data-driven solutions and strategies. We are honored to have him share his insight with us today. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, please take the stage. Did we lose Pablo? I just saw him a second ago. Okay, so in that case, Lee, I would suggest let's switch over to the video that we have created for the judges, and then we will pull in Pablo afterwards. Thank you to all of our team judges for providing their valuable insights. We are excited to announce that we have compiled a pre-recorded video featuring judges from around the world sharing their perspectives on the AI hackathon and providing guidance on how to distinguish a successful project. Get ready to be inspired and gain knowledge. to see like very original ideas. I feel like uh, the topics are very flexible. I personally like a lot the generative AI for obvious reasons. Uh, but I want to see participants going beyond the typical applications what we are seeing from the companies or from the industry. I think that they're bringing creative solutions and especially targeting like uh, important topics that could have like some social value, etc. That's what I'm hoping to see. The first thing I will expect from this competition is learning. Um, in every sense, learning from the participants, learning from judges, uh, learning from the public. And within, within that learning, um, I think that the contribution to humanity is essential, that in some way, this competition contributes a grain of sand to development and growth of humanity. Uh, within this contribution, it seems to me more interesting that we find solutions to problems or opportunities that human beings have not been able to solve. I don't find it so interesting to use artificial intelligence to perform tasks that humans already do well, uh, such as studying and creating, researching a topic, uh, making criticisms or, or reading. 
for this reason, I prefer solve problems that human beings have not been able to solve. Yeah, like I said, I hope to see some real insights on uh, new interesting problems in AI. And I'm quite sure, given the, the breadth of the scope of the hackathon and uh, the fact that people from all over the world will participate with different backgrounds, we will, we will get that. Well, obviously, there's a lot of scope for leveraging the recent large language models to do a number of things from theory of mind and, um, to emotional understanding. Uh, there's a lot of untapped potential in language models. I do feel that uh, they are taking maybe a, too much, uh, too large a share of the attention of the public and also the researchers. So I hope people will still pursue some uh, original avenues that could be the new language models in five or ten years time. The, one of the biggest things I'm really passionate about when I'm judging a project um, is primarily what problem are we solving? Okay, what is the what is the difference we're trying to make, and you know what is the the real challenge that we are looking to solve with this solution that we are working on that you're build, building. The second thing is um, making sure that it's something that can be achieved, right? So they, you know, we could solve, we could come up with massive, uh, huge uh, vision and solutions, but what is it that we can achieve from the problem that we're looking to solve? That, and I like to see a plan of um, how we are going to actually productionize this thing in the future, because ultimately, uh, you know, what we want to try to do is look at the the solution that we're we're, we're developing. And think about right from the get go, how will this scale? Like, how will how will this scale? How will this fit into the ecosystem? Now, I want people to kind of be having that visionary thought process in their mind to think that when we do, if we do go ahead with this, or if this gets expected, and if you are the winner, what's the plan behind it, right? So think about that beforehand. So I want people who are proactive and who are thinking about the long term vision as well as what they're producing right now. Third thing is. Um, in terms of um, what you have learned and what you're going to pass on to other people. So I want this to be a highly collaborative uh, activity in nature. So it's very important for people to learn, uh, to kind of um, get a good sense of what they've taken from this activity and how are they going to teach that or share that with other people. Kind of uh, anecdotes, kind of a few other areas where I think are important is making sure that you obviously, you know, have a unique idea, right? So make sure it's something different that you're doing. You don't want to be doing something exactly like for life. Well, I think uh, there, there's two components. One is originality of thought and, uh, and novelty. And the other one is impressive uh, empirical results. And you, you can have the best idea in the world, but if it does, it's not backed up by, by your numbers, then uh, people will likely not pay a lot of interest to it. So I think it needs to be a combination of both. So novelty and originality of thought and uh, very good theory and critical results. I think the, the impact uh, and the replicability of the project is uh, for me the, the main thing that, that separates a successful project than a non-successful one. I mean, I, I imagine there's going to be like lots of wonderful ideas and projects, but uh, the, the ones that have the more impact, the more replicability and that, that may um, uh, become something better. Artificial intelligence has taken an impressive leap in the last year and the growth will be exponential from now on. Ever before uh, has the world opened its arms to artificial intelligence so much and the ideas that emerge at this time will endure over time, obviously evolving at the rapid pace of, of technology, so the time is now. If it not do, it will be others who will take advantage of this unique opportunity in history. So 
Let's do it. Come on. The main advice I can give is just enjoy the experience. Put so much for you are participating. Make the most of this. You never know how uh, good this experience can be. I personally started my career by joining hackathons and, and technical events. And then I met people, I create ideas, other people create startups. So I think like uh, put the most of that and let's see how that goes. Nothing is impossible. Like that's why I would say is don't fear that, that it's not a bad idea or don't fear that you can't do it or there's no chance of you winning or, you know, you. I think you should have a very open mind about this and just be fearless and jump into it, right? And do it because the more you think about it, the more you procrastinate, the more you, you know, the, the less chance of you having uh, participation in here and, and, and kind of actually, you know, having success of being uh, no winner in this in this event. So I think don't, don't have any fear, go for it. Uh, you know, take it on as an opportunity. Excellent, wonderful um, contribution of some of the other judges and mentors in the video. So take two, let's give it another try. Pablo, are you uh, ready to talk about the uh, the third competition? Hi, yes, I'm ready now. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yes, welcome, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sorry about the uh, the troubles before, but uh, my computer doesn't have the permission necessary to the camera works. So, I am Pablo Jofre. I'm working in Walmart Chile as a data lead. I am working in Walmart uh, about two years ago, and I am leading the the teams of engineering, uh, intelligence artificial artificial engineering and machine learning applications in our our company here in Chile. Uh, we are <clears throat> a we are about in the uh, we are in the digital information in Chile because uh, our company is big and mortar principal like uh, uh, like like that like stuff not not very much of digital experience on and machine learning application and data science projects so we are <clears throat> pushing this now and we believe that th th there is a lot of value that we can explore explode there. So, self-supervised supervised learning in the autonomous industry is the um, the third competition in our hackathon this year. Um, self-supervision learning uh, refers to the use of unlabeled or semi-supervised large-scale collected data to train recognition models for real-world um, perception tasks in autonomous systems. This is a data intensive approach. However, it holds great potential for the ever growing field of autonomous systems, including drone research, autonomous explorations, and bio inspired systems. The goal is to develop autonomous systems that can think, think and react independent, independently <clears throat> in real world situations. We aim to put boundaries of this field by challenging the contest contestant to develop cutting edge industry level autonomous systems through self supervised learning techniques. The, the next. Thank you. So, why supervised learning, self supervised learning is uh, important in the autonomous industry? Because uh, we have a lot of unlabeled data. So, Self-supervised learning allows autonomous systems to learn from this unlabeled data, making it a more efficient and cost-effective approach to, to training these our models. Also, we have more adaptability. Self-supervised learning allows these systems to learn from their own experience, making them, making them more adaptable and robust uh, in a variety of set settings. Also, we have a better performance in self-supervised learning has been shown to be effective and at improving the performance of these systems, especially in scenarios where labeled data is scarce. And also future proofing, self-supervised learning provides a way to, for autonomous to continue improving over time. 
Uh, even as new challenges and opportunity arises. Okay, the next place. We are expecting to see uh, a lot of usage cases uh, based on innovation here. For example, in self-driving cars can adapt to changing weather conditions, traffic patterns, and road surfaces. Also, uh, a lot of application in, in, in healthcare, uh, helping the doctors to to find new new uh, diseases, uh, improve safety and efficiency of drone delivery system through self-supervised learning, application of self-supervised learning to industrial robotics and agriculture, agricultural equipment, adaptive and resilient autonomous system that can handle unexpected scenarios, and enhance decision making capabilities to of autonomous systems through self-supervised learning algorithms. Uh, also, a uh, reduced need for human intervention and overseen in autonomous systems. And improve, improve performance and reliability, reliability of autonomous technology through continuous self-supervised learning and adaptations. So, we are inviting you to uh, participate in our hackathon in this competition through innovation and a lot of new techniques to improve the the being well of the humans. All right, Pablo, thank you. Take two. That was good. Um, thanks for your contribution. So we just saw the video um, that we had pre-recorded from some of the mentors and judges. Uh, we have also prepared a second video. Uh, to talk a little bit about our long-term vision for the entire community being owners uh, and participants of the WOW DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization. So before um, Ha and uh, Chris, who is part of the core team in the recording, before we dive a little bit more into the details of the hackathon, I would suggest that we are showing the, the video first and then we shift over to some additional PowerPoint presentations. So please go ahead and show the video. Moving on, we would like to introduce you to the concept of WoDAO, the first decentralized autonomous organization for the AI community. I'm thrilled to introduce Ms. Hadao, CEO and co-founder of WoAI, co-organizer of this hackathon. Thomas Newbert, former GM DB AI Acceleration at Intel, founder of Transatlantic AI Exchange and co-organizer of this hackathon, as well as one of the core members of the DAO, Chris Burns, IP attorney, Web3 advisor, pioneer IP NFT legal frameworks for decentralized science. They all will discuss the vision and mission of WoDAO and how it aims to benefit AI community. Please give a warm virtual welcome to Ha, Thomas and Chris, will be joining us today to discuss WoDAO and its mission. Good morning and good evening wherever you are and welcome to the opening ceremony of our AI hackathon for the WoDAO. Allow me for a few minutes to introduce WoDAO, the team, the vision and the purpose and why we are all here. So first of all, the WoW DAO is what we believe the first decentralized autonomous organization for the AI community. The WoW DAO itself is blockchain based and it's a full cycle ecosystem of all the AI inventions that's being developed within the realm of Web3 and blockchain that covers the entire innovation phase from building artificial intelligence and ML models and implementing them to commercializing them as intellectual property, non-fungible tokens. So this is going to be a community effort. And what we are trying to build and what we are envision is the WoW AI or the WoW DAO ecosystem. And it's being built over time in certain phases. In phase one, we are 
creating and building the hackathon. That's why we are here. And thank you all the hacker teams and the members and the judges and the mentors to uh, contribute to this uh, pretty big, important effort. In phase one, we are going to announce the hackathon platform in itself. Everybody on this call obviously has signed up, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Um, but ultimately, this is just the beginning of the big vision that we have. The first one is let's build the hackathon platform, which we have. Invite the potential members of the down as the participants uh, within the hackathon. That's phase one. We are starting it right now in the month of April. And it will last until August. And then hopefully it will conclude uh, in the early September time frame. And hopefully we can celebrate that with a day and a half of an AI Web3 uh, conference that we are putting together here in California, Silicon Valley. So that's the, 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 the first phase. Uh, we are then in parallel starting the efforts of uh, crowdfunding the platform for the AI startups. And we will invite all the potential members to look into that potentially, as well as regular uh, investors that we are going to uh, get introduced. In parallel to organizing the hackathon, we are uh, reaching out to crowdfunding opportunities and to uh, individual investors. So everybody is invited to contribute. If you have somebody who has an interest, please let us know. But in general, just to sum up this very complex picture here is we are trying to simply democratize AI and put the control of the IP into the hands of the individual developer so that they can actually get the gain over time, which is the beauty of Web3 and blockchain. So with that in mind, we are going to use this ecosystem to uh, provide a data marketplace where things can be traded and sold and, and resold. We are creating an IP pool uh, of all AI innovations where the contribution of all members uh, will gain from the increased value cumulatively. And at the same time, we are going to have this ecosystem built for um, an entire developer ecosystem of developers where the developers can meet developers, the developers can meet marketplaces, investors can meet startups and so on. So that's the bigger vision of the wow DAO um, that we have in mind. With that, I, I would leave it with that and I would like to bring it over to Chris, one of the founding members who will talk about the legal IP side as well. Thank you, Thomas. I'm excited to describe for everyone the intellectual property commons that we'll be using with WowDAO. I'm sure many in our audience are familiar with intellectual property commoning, be it through the use of open source licenses, creative commons, or perhaps some of you have even participated in the past in patent pooling. The intellectual property commons that WowDAO is developing is a first of its kind Web3 enabled IP commons run on intellectual property NFTs. We're thrilled to use an IP commons as a vehicle for WowDAO because it offers us both an opportunity to bring community together, to co-develop IP, and to ensure our participants in WowDAO have a freedom to operate while still preserving IP producers and those in the DAO creating their own IP commercial rights. We do this by pooling our IP and creating what is essentially a limited open access licensing framework. While enabling members of the DAO to share IP with each other, we restrict open access um, to only those inside the DAO. Those outside of the DAO are able to subscribe to our IP commons and IP pool. And we also allow piecemeal licensing um, for those who only want to utilize certain pieces of IP that the DAO creates. Web3 enabled IP commoning is one of the most promising forms of uh, use cases for Web3 technology that we have. Through this, we feel confident that we'll be able to really help further democratize AI and its development. I'll now turn it over to Ha. 
think three. So as a token holders, you can have several benefits. You can have a voice to shape the future of your own organization. You can govern uh, the organization, and you can receive rewards for any single activity you are engaging with the ecosystem. You can receive the free access to all the necessary tools within the ecosystem, and also the IP common pool for AI inventions. You can have early access to AI startups, and most importantly, you will receive the profit sharing when the DAO has profits. And uh, after the hackathon, we welcome all the participants, including judges, mentors. Contestants and attendees to be initial members of the DAO by sharing the airdrop tokens to all the uh, participants. Uh, this is our overall roadmap right now. Actually, we started this um, mission from September last year, and so far we are wrapping up the legal um, paper. And uh, we are expecting to launch the DAO in Q3 this year, when we have the final um, conference of the Worldwide A Hackathon along with the Web3 Summit. We will also have the IP pool initial development in Q3, and the crowdfunding platform should be ready uh, after September, so that top winners of the hackathon will be able to raise funds from the community by selling. The intellectual property NFT to the community, and uh, we also expect to have the data marketplace to be built um, by the end of Q3 this year. And uh, in Q4, we expect to have the initial token distribution um, at the end of maybe at the end of the 2023. Yeah. So thank you everybody for um, listening to the introduction of the Wow DAO. And uh, thank you on behalf of our core team, Chris, Ha, and myself, here on the call. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the ride. Great, making progress. Thank you very much. Um, I hope this video was uh, informative for everybody. Now you get a taste of what the overall vision actually is for this entire exercise, that the output here is the creation of the DAO and every participant, every contributor can be a member, should be a member actually of this uh, DAO in the future. And it's probably a trend that you will see all over the place when people get more and more introduced and more comfortable with blockchain and Web3. So moving along, uh, looking at the schedule, we are now diving a little bit deeper into the hackathon itself. So uh, we have a few slides that we would like uh, to go over. Uh, if that is correct. So in that case, why don't we start sharing the slides? Um, are we sharing the slides? Let me go full screen for a second. Yes, we are. Sorry. I have too many windows open. All right. So let's look at uh, the timeline and the schedule. So the registration for the hackathon itself um, is already open. Um, we have currently uh, opened it by the end of February in March. And uh, the registration is open until the end of June, which still gives teams the time to uh, develop some unique um, value of a project that they can submit uh, because the submission itself is due by the middle and or by the end of August. Uh, by then the judges will look at all the materials that's being presented. Uh, and then we will announce the winners uh, at the Worldwide AI Hackathon closing ceremony, which is a day and a half event around AI and Web3. Uh, we are targeting the September timeframe, most likely the middle towards the end of September. And as a heads up, uh, at the moment, we are contemplating between two places where we will have this event, uh, two beautiful places. One is most likely either in Mountain View, California, here in Silicon Valley, the Tech Museum in Mountain View, which is literally right between the Google campus and the Microsoft campus. And the other one, the preferred venue, is going to be the most beautiful uh, and, and you know, nicely I mean, uh, respected venue of Stanford University. And we will make a decision hopefully within the next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, 
Uh, next slide, please. Just uh, to wrap up the, the high level overview, this is again, this is the hackathon. So at the moment we have already uh, 1,000, more than 1,200 contestants who registered. Considering that we are only six to eight weeks into this, we hope that we can easily go way beyond 2,000 uh, contestants. And keep in mind, whoever the contestants are, they are encouraged, it's not a requirement, it's not mandatory, but everybody is encouraged to actually be a participant, be a member, um, and as a member, not only you have voting rights, but you also gain from the community effort for the DAO itself. Um, we have over 75 countries already uh, from various universities and various uh, startup um, groups that are uh, forming the teams right now as we speak. Next slide, please. We mentioned already some names before, but just to sum it up a little bit, because this is really important. On one hand, we are very gracious to have um, the incredible individual judges based on their backgrounds and the companies that they're representing. But we also have the mentors who are technically savvy, who are business savvy. Some of them already shared some of the guidelines that they would like to see. But I think what makes us unique here in regards to the hackathon is not just the vision of the DAO, it's actually the who is who, the companies who have this early on in the in this in the stage um, have actually uh, been willing to put their brands and their um, association to AI behind our effort. And I think we all, as a group, we all as a community can be proud. Uh, we can be proud of it because that will help us to actually gain even more momentum, not just for the community but also for investors and hopefully sponsors as well. So uh, the next slide is just summarizing the three competitions that uh, the teams can conquer. We already covered them, all of them, by the people who just spoke before me, so I don't have to go into the details. And with that, I would go right over and I would like to hand this over to the visionary of this whole program. Uh, ha, if you don't mind, please uh, take the stage. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much, Thomas. Um, a lot of our contestants are asking why do we set general concepts for three competitions, um, so especially for contestants who used to joining some other traditional hackathon like from Kaggle. Um, so you, you know from Thomas, we are gathering around more than 100 judges and mentors from a wide range of industries, right? So we want to give you this as a chance to gain valuable advice from diverse expertise. And also we want to encourage you to come up with innovation and creativity. You can see the slogan of the hackathon, which is um, AI innovation towards global solutions, right? So please feel free to come up with any innovations and unique ideas, as long as you can solve the real world problems and beneficial for the humanity. And of course, we have to make sure that your outputs will fit in well with one out of three competitions. And uh, not like traditional hackathon, we hope to incubate startup. So even though the hackathon will end in September, but hopefully it will not just end there. We can support you to uh, continue to raise funds from the community. And also you can get support from other mentors and other peers to continue with your complete products and then commercialize those innovations in the form of um, IPNFT or any other forms. Next slide, please. And in this hackathon, you don't have anything to lose and everything to gain. Apart from the huge prize pool for three competitions, um, you can also have a chance to raise funds from the community and commercialize the, your outputs. And uh, we are expecting to cover the expense for top nine finalists uh, to go to San Francisco and uh, enjoy uh, the two day conference um, along with other attendees and judges and mentors. And uh, this is also a chance for you to present your um, startup, maybe early startup in front of other VCs to, to raise funds from them. And uh, you can have free access to our comprehensive platform. So don't have to worry about computation, GPU. And after the hackathon, 
when the DAO will have the token launch, uh, we will also airdrop tokens to all the participants and many more benefits. You should pay attention to uh, the submission criteria. Our judges already voted for four criteria. Uh, out of four, two are mandatory. Uh, you should have one short video to demo your product. This one should be around one to two minutes. And uh, you should have a pitch deck. Uh, this one should be 10 slides. And uh, it's optional for you to submit code base and uh, paper and other documents if you want. Regarding the scoring criteria, our judges already voted for six criteria. The first one is innovation. The second one is functionality. The third one is uh, originality and creativity. But it doesn't mean that you will have to build um, a model from the scratch. Our judges and mentors already mentioned, you can also fine tune free change model and as long as your um, output will be uh, innovative and you can solve real world problems and, and beneficial to humanity. And it should be practical as well. And of course, should be consistent with the theme of the hackathon. And you don't have to wait for anything, only three months left. It's better for you to start as soon as possible. Go to the dashboard and uh, pick up the competition you want to hack and uh, check for the tutorials. Um, check and uh, seek support from our incredible mentors, and then you can start right away. Three months left, so please hurry. And um, now I'd like to welcome one of our mentors um, who will join us live today to share about her tips, thoughts for you to win this hackathon. Andrea, uh, a leader and also an expert in data science and digital innovation in Heineken, Mexico. Please, how about to you? Thank you so much for, uh, for inviting me. Well, um, as I told you, I'm the lead data scientist for manufacturing in Heineken for Mexico and also the North and South America region. And um, well, I I was told that I have only five minutes to give you some advice. So I, I was planning on having five different areas. The first one, and I think that is the most important one is creativity. Maybe this is one of the most uh, underestimated ability that you need to succeed in, in a, any technology related area but especially in a hackathon where, where the, the innovation is part of the core of the event. It's really key to have it in mind because that's what will, you will need in order to succeed, uh, to deliver under pressure and with different uh, limited resources and time. So, so be especially creative and, and uh, be ready to create a lot of ideas. There's no such a thing of a, of a bad idea. And if you think that one idea is not good enough, you can use it as a fuel in order to create some other ideas. And and I think that you should do that, especially work an idea for an idea and create it another idea after that one until you are happy with, with uh, your plan. So don't be shy on creating ideas. Uh, the next one is related to, to the different tools. Be aware of the tools that you already master and be also ready to learn uh, new tools because mo most of the time you will need those in order to, to deliver your final result. So um, make some time, especially for this learning process. This is really important. And also the idea presentation. Um, you should work on uh, the way that you communicate your ideas. So be specific, be clear, be brief, and use as many visual help as, as you can, because this is the easiest way that you can communicate an, an idea. Um, next one is the documentation. And I think that especially in the technology area, this is one of the boring part, but if you are later on the process and you need to rework uh, something that you start at the beginning of the of your journey, it will really be helpful. So maybe you can work on that and you understand what you were thinking on, on that phase of the project, or maybe uh, because of the time, some other member of your team will need to work on your previous work and it will be a lot more easier if you already have the documentation needed for, for that part of, of the project. And last but not least, um, don't forget to take as many breaks as you can 
uh, as you need because uh, the idea here is that you will need to be creative and you cannot do that if you are burned out. So uh, take as many breaks as possible uh, so you can recharge your energy and deliver your your most valuable ideas and, and creativity to, to this project. And that will be all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andrea. And hopefully you can still stay because we will have an AMA session uh, and then hopefully we can have you on the, the stage to answer the questions from our uh, sure. attendees. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. And um, we also combined um, other mentors, uh, tips and, and sharing. So please play the video to share with the, our contestants. Three things to keep in mind. One, keep the project simple. I cannot emphasize that enough. Number two, don't jump into coding. As soon as you have an idea, don't just go jump and start coding. I strongly recommend that you first have a very clear view as to what your outputs should be. And then work backwards to the inputs. And uh, basically you're stitching the entire pipeline from left to right and um, uh, anticipate any potential pitfalls and plan accordingly. Um, number three, have fun. Um, I hope uh, you will all do very, very well and succeed. I'm actually looking forward to seeing some of these uh, um, projects. Thank you and uh, see you all soon. Bye. Um, here's some uh, advices that I, I wish uh, someone told me when I was starting in my career. I think you can apply to this hackathon. Um, first is um, instead of starting, um, you know, a business or, or an idea based on a new technology. First, I think you you have to focus on the problem you want to solve and how you're gonna apply technology, like for instance AI, uh, to you know provide a better solution. Um, second, it's uh, start from the desired uh, end result and then work uh, backwards to the beginning. Um, and that's, of course, after you have a good uh, understanding uh, of the problem you want to solve. Um, that's the most efficient way uh, to come up with a solution in the you know, uh, minimum uh, amount of time. So uh, I believe that the guidance uh, from mentors might benefit development of projects uh, by helping them identify uh, useful uh, benchmarks or uh, reference that are related to the project. Uh, it's also important to uh, give some uh, feedback uh, on planning and also like breaking break it down the, the project into uh, smaller and intermediate uh, pieces and deliverables uh, so that a more iterative and trial and error approach could be applied. Uh, it's also important to uh, identify uh, possible uh, knowledge gaps in the, in the team and possibly incentivize uh, participants to uh, join or uh, if you merge teams with uh, complementary skills mm. uh, and on the, the needs as well. I'm expecting to see innovation projects with, um, with AI technology, obviously, but I think that the participants need to be disruptive. Okay, they need to be focusing. Okay, we have a problem to solve and we are not afraid about how we can solve the problem. So I think that we we need to be focusing, think really outside the box. Okay, just to we starting to uh, work with AI, it's a very good step because with the innovation, we, have, we are already thinking a little bit outside the box, but we need to think, okay, there is a problem we need to find a way to solve it. I think what really is something that I'm looking forward for, Eric, in this whole hackathon is there's a bunch of fresh minds and I would like to see where they're coming from, 
what is their creativity and not just looking at what's ha- happening in the world but i think there are very fresh minds very fresh thoughts and i think that gives a very diverse thinking on how businesses could evolve in these directions and is this something that i could take back to my business saying that why don't we look at and transition our own because i think every organization is going through a digital transformation in some form and journey and i think these act have to give those pathways to think differently and i think that's the similar outcome that i'm looking at this one at the end of this event i hope to see participants have a lot of learning in addition i would like to see a approach that have innovation and creativity to solve problems what i found really helpful is when people are able to really articulate the problems that they're trying to solve and see if the mentors can really help with the mentors network and also some of their experience and so be specific about what you need and we'll be able to do great things thanks i find the most effective start in a hackathon is to establish clear communication channels this means setting up regular check-ins with your mentors and teammates and using messaging apps to stay in touch by doing so you can ensure that progress is moving forward and that everyone is on the same page Next, collaborate and share ideas with your team members. Remember to be positive, inclusive, and build on each other's proposals. Enjoy your time and think beyond the hackathon to the relationships you might build through this shared experience. Then, identify your strengths and weaknesses and those of your teammates. Figure out early on who is good at what. By doing so, you can anticipate and fill gaps sooner than later. You should also use your mentors to help you. The first thing is to define a road map of the project with objective and milestone. I can help the team to scope the project, uh, guide them to explore new horizons and if they are blocked sometimes, I can also also uh, unblock them. Uh, I can also uh, check uh, the milestone, challenge them and review the final pitch and demo of course for the last last final step and my other uh, piece of advice is is to avoid um, some of the common pitfalls such as defining the project to be a uber project you know scope of the project to be humongous um in in unrealistic timelines um and and have has a uh, program management um i think um some of the very helpful things you'll find with the mentors uh, in this program uh are are very experienced people who can guide you who can make you come to the correct conclusions um and work towards successful execution of the program project yeah so the most common pitfall which i observe from hackathons is that either the participants do not focus on the feasibility of the study which they do so feasibility is one major uh, thing which they should focus on and the next thing is uh, how they bring it or how their product is uh, given to the customers because most of the products are based on the business value not on the customer value so whatever solution uh, developed by the participants or the team members should be based on the customer value and not on the a uh, business value so these two are the major things where the participant has to concentrate on so that we develop a better solution which will be useful for the society and there will be an advancement in the technology as well awesome uh thank you so much all of our mentors who who cannot join live today uh, to share your tips and thoughts and now i think Yeah, AMA session. Okay, we will go to the AMA session. Um, may I invite uh, Andrea, Vijay, and uh, Bayum if you are still here on the stage. Lee, can you 
please have to invite our judges and mentors to go on the stage. Uh, do you recall um, some of the questions from this morning that we made? Yeah, actually, I do time? have the list. I do also have the list of questions that our attendees are asking. Um, so the, some of the questions, I really hope that we can have, yeah, mentors and judges. Okay. Yeah, by you, yeah. So the first question from Amit, he is asking, how can synthetic AI be programmed to understand and interpret human emotions with accuracy and what ethical con considerations should be taken into account when designing such a system? Bayum, could you please help me to address this question from Amit? Sure. Um, is there, I, I miss I'm gonna what you said, huh? and I'm gonna also text you in, in the chat box. Yeah. The chat box seems to be very small to see all the questions. Okay, you, you can check uh, the message uh, on stage. I just sent the question there. Got it. Um, okay, so the question is, how can synthetic AI be programmed to understand and interpret human emotions with accuracy? And what ethical considerations should be taken into account when designing such a system? Um, two part question, I'll try to address both, but maybe I can start with the first one. How can synthetic AI be programmed to understand and interpret human emotions with accuracy? Um, I think this is a great question, Amit. Um, something that really unlocks the potential of um, artificial intelligence in general, as we know that um, social and emotional intelligence come automatically almost automatically to humans. Um, we, we react on instinct. And so um, how can this automatic understanding be taught to a machine? Um, and I think there's a couple different areas to explore um, in that uh, first in the field of research, um, I think AI and neuroscience researchers maybe agree that current forms of AI can't have their own emotions, but they can mimic emotions um, such as empathy. And this is where things like uh, synthetic speech would come into play. Um, I know there is um, some machine learning models pioneered by Google, um, something called Tacotron 2, which is transforming the field to simulate human-like artificial voices, um, which uses synthetic data. And so, um, if, if machines can understand how we can feel and produce uh, a caring response, does that mean that they're emotionally intelligent? And so I think the first kind of step towards um, solving this problem and understanding and interpreting emotions is um, being able to produce um, the kind of responses that humans can generate. Um, and that's the, 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 the key issue that needs to be addressed first. Um, in, in regards to the second question, what ethical considerations should be taken into account when designing such a system? Um, Thomas Ha, I'm not sure if you have any thoughts on that. Um, I, I think uh, ethically, um, this isn't something I've um, given a lot of thought to, but it's something that is really important when coming up with um, artificial intelligence solutions. Um, we want to make sure that the machines and models that we're building uh, adhere to some kind of standard that humans have set for them. And so um, there are a lot of questions that come with that. Um, I don't know, Ha, Thomas, do you want to elaborate on the ethic, on the ethical part? Do you have any more insight? Uh, 
We had a we had a similar question this morning, um, and I would rather answer it on a very high level. And it was okay. about you know what kind of ethical standard um, anybody should apply if they have some crazy ideas. I personally have to say, by the end of the day, um, everybody should be encouraged to develop something where they are addressing a problem that is worth solving. Uh, for the planet in in a big way, in a small way, in, in whatever way. Ultimately, I would like to ask everybody to just apply common sense and also a very high level of ethical um, standards. Now, we haven't defined that in writing, but I can tell you uh, whatever the solutions are that's being presented by us, the judges... Um, as they are going through the ratings in late August, middle of early September, will definitely have a look on the ethical output of whatever has been presented to us. So would we, you know, support unethical solutions to do something that may be, you know, indiscriminating certain races or whatever? Absolutely not. That's, that's, that's an absolute no-go. So apply common sense, look for problems to solve, help other people in the world to, you know, have, have, have the day tomorrow is better than today, yesterday or today. If you apply that, everything will be fine. There's always two sides to this. In AI, it is regulations are still not actually, you know, all in place, but I, I'm always up to high value standards and common sense. That's it. Thanks, Thomas. Totally. Um, we we have another question from Manny Kant. I'm not sure if I'm announcing his name properly. About generative AI. Um, so, can we work on generative AI apps that can be used to generate generate realistic simulations that can be used for training or testing purposes in the fields of aviation or defense. How, how do you feel about this one where you, um, you talked about generative AI, but um, the topic is about defense and aviation. Any thoughts, please? Um, yes, let me just find the question text. Um, Got it. So the question here is, can we work on Gen AI apps that can be used to generate realistic simulations that can be used for training or testing purposes in the fields of aviation or defense? Um, yes, I think the short answer is uh, please. Um, the excitement behind um, generative AI is that it can be applied and revolutionized to um, tons of different industries. Um, some of the things that I covered before were construction, uh, marketing businesses. Um, something that I, I didn't cover is um, AI and, and military uses. Um, and I think AI uh, right now is um, kind of at the center of a lot of uh, a new military uses. Um, some things that I can think of off the top of my head are uh, warfare systems, um, strategic decision making, uh, even uh, data processing and research, um, and especially in the scenarios of uh, fraud and threat monitoring. Um, I think there's a lot of different applications that um, Gen AI apps can be used for, for aviation or defense, um, e e even, even in cybersecurity. Um, and I think that... Uh, exploring some of these use cases, um, though it might not be intuitive to use generative AI, uh, can, can be really impactful. And, um, and I think some of the judges and mentors were mentioning that um, the things that we're looking for is um, an impactful and, and, and great project that can change the lives of many people. And um, ideas for aviation and defense certainly uh, fit the criteria for that. Yeah, thank you so much. And and actually, initially we we did have one judge uh, representing from USA Air Force, um, but later he he couldn't join due to the busy schedule. So if our uh, contestant can 
come up with any innovation in, in aviation. Hopefully, we can still invite him to join our ending ceremony to score um, nine finalists. And anyway, Thomas, we have two questions uh, for the DAO from Amit. Uh, the first one is about uh, the detailed well DAO decentralized autonomous organization and how it differs from traditional centralized ones. Do you want to take this one? Yeah, I'm not sure which one they are comparing it to, um, but I can only speak for us and what we are envisioning. Uh, and, and I, I want to make it very short because it is a complex situation. We at the moment are engaged with multiple very experienced lawyers. And if people are following what is happening with the SEC regulations at the moment and with the whole blockchain and, and crypto industry, it is quite a challenge where we would like to be different is and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing the question that one of these really educated lawyers asked us and the question was very simple where do you want to be what do you want to build and our answer amongst the core team was very i would say um straightforward we are not here for making a big buck short term and get in and out and play the wild west with and around crypto. We are absolutely not. We are here for the long haul. We are building an, an ecosystem of equal AI developer who are equal members of the decentralized autonomous organization. The, the community is the value of what we are building. And as such, the individual contribution will increase exponentially the overall value of the entity in itself. And because everybody is measured by the contribution and they own what they have developed, which is obviously the core difference than what you have seen in the Web2 world, we are simply trying to build an organization that is here for the long haul, where we increase the value of the organization by increasing the IP assets of the entity in itself and building an ecosystem. Um, I don't want to compare it with anybody else. There are so many different flavors out there. We have not seen an equivalent DAO with the vision as we have outlined it for the wild DAO. And we have not everything finalized, just to be clear. Um, uh, we are still finalizing the, the legal construct, yet, but we have the best lawyers out there and uh, before, obviously, we have the hackathon in a few months, the legal entity will be announced. And by then, all the other activities in regards to airdrops and tokens and all of that stuff will be addressed, will be legally um, uh, written down, and it will be shared with the community, meaning everybody in this call and everybody who is participating with the hackathon, because everybody should be, could be, a member uh, for the future. Yeah, excellent. Um, I'm not sure if, do we still have more time? I still have some more questions from our yeah, team. Yeah, we are kind of out, out of time. But if you maybe squeeze in one more question. Mm, okay, let me pick up one more. In the healthcare industry. Pick. Uh, here we go. Maybe this one. Um, a question from uh, Kim. How will the judges ensure that synthetic data sets are sufficiently diverse and uh, representative of populations that are mean to simulate or model? Yumi is not here. Uh, Thomas, as one of the judges, do you want to address this question? Uh, repeat the question, please. I just typed uh, on stage. Uh, you, you can read it if you find it better. Yeah, the question from Kim. How will the judges ensure 
that synthetic data sets are sufficiently diverse and representative of the populations that they are meant to simulate. And, oh, wow, that's a good one. Um, I just had a session on the transatlantic AI exchange last week about trustworthy AI. And it's a very hot topic, obviously. So I again, I haven't seen any code what, what will be presented, we don't know yet. Um, but the only thing probably that we can do is when we get the material from the individual teams uh, around this particular topic, that the judges, and I'm one of them, I will make sure that I will challenge the uh, creator to provide us the information in detail of what data sets and what parameters they have used to train the models. Um, I don't think at this moment that we will sit here as judges and go through all the line of codes and looking this up. I will, if I know there is a particular project that has been presented to us where this may be an issue, I will personally make sure that we are challenged the creator to prove to us the kind of data sets that they have used. And if we can find there are maybe some holes in it and some you know, regional uh, people or, or, or regions within the world or age groups or, you know, whatever has been missing, then I would make a suggestion that we will allow the IP creator, or sorry, the, the project creator to go back if the time is sufficient and actually adjust whatever they presented to us with some of the feedbacks. Um, Maybe as a side note, I can only encourage everybody on this call and everybody who is listening to this video, who is one of these, you know, creative team members and founders and developers. I tell you, I wish 30 years ago, beginning of my career, something like a platform like this would have been created. Um, for supporting me with the ideas that I have in mind as an entrepreneur. I can only challenge you, take advantage of our networking launch that we have within the Wow DAO, and really take your time and study the absolute incredible list of mentors who are standing by, who are willing to help. So if you wanna develop something and these kind of questions or parameters are of a concern, the thing is, don't wait until the very end when you provide something to the to the judge. Challenge the mentor. Seek the mentor's advice during the process. Maximize the outcome and then presenting it. So to, the, the true answer to the question is, it shouldn't be an issue of the judge. It should have already been implemented and addressed by the mentor during the process in itself but it needs to be fair by the end of the day. That's for sure. Um, though we still have some other questions, I think uh, we are out of time, so maybe we will answer them via email later. I okay. Think we, yeah. So respecting okay. everybody's time and, uh, and uh, I wanna thank all the participants here uh, for this attending the opening uh, ceremony. And I can only encourage all of you, you know, collaborate, collaborate and innovate. Uh, keep in mind, this is a team effort. Teams meaning uh, get the best team in place as you can. Um, look outside, maybe some other people around the world have the same interest. Maybe there are some teams that you want to combine two teams because they are stronger together. Be creative, take your time. Don't just sit in your little room with you know, one, two people and just do something take advantage of this incredible network that we have uh, put in front of you. Now with that, we, uh, in behalf of the, the Wow Dao and uh, all the people here who participated, we wish everybody good luck, great success, enjoy it. Um, don't take it, you know, take it easy. It's, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's a hobby. It's a side thing, at least for now. Hopefully you can make it into something bigger. And again, we have on our website, we have the networking launch. And if I would be on the other side of this, I would make really sure 
that I know exactly the kind of mentors that I have access to, and I will handpick the best possible individuals to help me to actually make this successful. So with that, again, thank you, everybody. Um, maybe on a, on a side note, uh, tell your friends or go on LinkedIn, promote this particular video to the wider community of people who would like to join. And maybe selfishly speaking in behalf of our greater purpose of what we are trying to accomplish, not only we are seeking more individuals to join the hackathon, we are actually also very strongly looking into finding sponsors for the hackathon, for the venue, for the event. Obviously, this all costs some money and the economical macroeconomic situation is not the easiest these days. So if everybody is really believing in the DAO and the greater purpose, please help us to find sponsors to actually pull this off. With that, I wish everybody a great evening, a great morning, wherever you are in the world. And again, thank you very much on behalf of the entire team.